The name John Carmack is synonymous with two things. It's Software, the development studio behind Doom, Wolfenstein, Quake, you name it, and Virtual Reality. John Carmack joined Oculus back in 2013 and has been a huge influential factor in the way VR has shaped into what it is today. And recently, he decided, I've had enough of VR, I've had enough of Facebook slash Meta specifically, and their inefficient way of approaching the future of VR, despite having the resources to make it into something great. Despite being a key executive within Meta's VR division, John Carmack has been outspoken for a while. Back in 2021, John Carmack issued some words of warning for Meta and its Metaverse plans, stating things like, I really do care about the Metaverse and I bind to the vision. I have been pretty active arguing against every single Metaverse effort that we have tried to spin up internally in the company from even pre-acquisition times. And he argued against Meta strategy of wanting to be the sole proprietor of a metaverse and becoming sort of the monopoly of a metaverse. I have pretty good reasons to believe that setting out to build a metaverse is not actually the best way to wind up with a metaverse. I doubt a single application will get to that level of taking over everything. I just don't believe that one player, one company winds up making all the right decisions for this. And then he went on to criticize those with the mentality of just having this grand vision without actually having the know-how of whether something is feasible or something is appropriate in the way it's being implemented. The idea of the metaverse, Carmack says, can be a honeypot trap for architecture astronauts. That's what he labels programmers and designers who want to only look at things from the very highest levels while skipping the nuts and bolts details of how these things actually work. We're talking about the people who go, imagine if we could do this versus the people who go, you know, that's not really practical, right? and actually break down whether it's feasible and whether it's something worth doing given its practicality. Carmack bluntly stated that when people speak in high abstract terms or that kind of high level hand waving takes place, he just wants to tear his hair out because that's just not the things that are actually important when you're building something. And then he low key takes a jab at Mark Zuckerberg, but here we are, Carmack continued. Mark Zuckerberg has decided that now is the time to build a metaverse. So enormous wheels are turning and resources are flowing and the effort is definitely gonna be made. And throughout the story, you'll definitely see that Carmack definitely has issues with Mark Zuckerberg as a leader specifically. Next time he'd speak out would be on August of 2022 when he did an interview with Lex Fridman and had the following to say about the sheer amount of money that's been poured into the metaverse and the VR division, the billions of dollars that he said makes him sick to his stomach. Mark did announce that they spent $10 billion a year like on Reality Labs. Now, Reality Labs covers a lot. It was, VR was not the large part of it. It also had Portal and Spark and the big AR research efforts. And it's been expanding out to include AI and other things there where uh, there's a lot going on there. But $10 billion was just a number that I had trouble processing. It's just, it, I feel sick to my stomach thinking about that much mm. money being spent. But that's how they they demonstrate commitment to this where it's not... I'm. Um, more so than like, yeah, Google goes and cancels all of these projects, uh, different things uh, like that, while Meta is really sticking with the funding of VR and AR is still further out with it. So there's something to be said for that. Uh, it's not just going to vanish. The work's going in. I just wish it could be all those resources could be applied more effectively. So he both brings up the sheer amount of money that's been spent on reality labs and metaverse stuff and AR and VR and all these things. But also he just brings up the inefficiency of the company and how that money and all the resources and manpower are being utilized inefficiently. And so progress is slower than it should be. And then in the days, weeks, and months to follow, Meta would go through trials and tribulations. They would engage in a hiring freeze that made it obvious the company wasn't growing financially at a level that executives were happy with. Optics for Meta only looked worse after reports came out that Meta has to essentially force employees to use the metaverse. They have to beg employees to fall in love with it because there's nothing to really love there. It's buggy and practical, and so employees barely want to use it. And it's not just employees. Users who try the metaverse drop off fairly quickly. Most metaverse users don't even make it a month, the Wall Street Journal reports. But you know, a product in this space that I do foresee myself using after more than just a month, a product from the sponsor of today's video, Enreal, a company that's focused on... 
augmented reality technology. What I got here are these light, comfortable, and adjustable AR glasses that allow you to do everything from watch videos, movies, and shows to playing games on a large yet highly portable virtual screen with star clarity thanks to the two full HD 60 hertz micro OLED displays that can generate virtual screens that can look up to 200 inches in size. It's easy enough to connect this device to your smartphone and mirror its contents at high fidelity or to engage with Unreal's own virtual AR environment featuring various apps that take full advantage of the hardware. My personal favorite use case was how easy it was to connect to gaming devices like the Steam Deck or even this One X Player Mini Windows gaming handheld and output a surprisingly clear and colorful large image on a virtual screen that would follow my head movements so that allowed me to comfortably game on these portable gaming devices while positioning myself however I wished. You can also separately buy this adapter that will allow you to connect it to consoles like the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5 and Xbox, laptops and computers and for A1 enabled Macs you can actually use these AR glasses to simulate multiple monitors around you. Not to mention that support for Xbox Cloud Gaming means you can stream games on a big screen on the go. And with these included blinders, you can blot out any transparency for a more immersive virtual screen experience. These could make for compelling holiday gifts, and you can go ahead and use my link in the description box below and in the pinned comment to make a purchase. But anyway, back to the news. Another instance of John Carmack speaking out against the company he was working for was during this MetaConnect 2022 unscripted talk. This was published two months ago back in October of 2022. He comes out in this rather really awful looking presentation style within the metaverse. It's just kind of stuttery and unnerving to see this character model, this John Carmack avatar moving in this rather uncanny way and looking so uncanny. In this presentation, Carmack did not mince words. He said, there's a bunch that I'm grumpy about in virtual reality and Meta's handling of it. And scrolling down, we'll find some quotes. One of them taking a jab at just how little progress has been made with the metaverse, that this is the presentation style that they have to go for, where it's this empty virtual room. You know, the original goal was to have a bunch of people watch this presentation within the metaverse, but instead you basically get filmed footage of John Carmack presenting within the metaverse by himself with his really awkward looking uncanny looking character model avatar alongside this environment that isn't really appealing to the eyes it's one of those like solutions in search of a problem it would have been more appealing for John Carmack to just come out in person and talk to a camera than that whole weird metaverse format it is reiterated that he said that there's a bunch that he's grumpy about he mentioned uh, public mockery about avatar quality earlier this year referring to this photo that got bashed so much so that Mark Zuckerberg had to take to Instagram to be like, no, 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 guys, don't worry. Models will end up looking like this sometime in the future, except this also looks relatively uncanny and it's really not that impressive by modern day standards. According to Carmack, that's made a lot of people within Meta internally paranoid about showing anything but the highest quality avatars and he believes that that shouldn't be the priority. Carmack expressed some heavy skepticism at that push for avatar fidelity, basically saying like the functionality of the metaverse and you know the software and the interactivity and the fun factor, all of these things should be prioritized. He specifically called out the nearly photorealistic codec avatars that Mark Zuckerberg recently showed off during a press conference. Carmack makes a pretty simple argument. It's going to eat up too much processing power to allow for crowded virtual rooms. And to encourage communal gatherings, Carmack believes that quantity should be the priority over quality. It's not worth making things look higher fidelity if it compromises the function of the product or service that you're making. Carmack had also criticized the Quest Pro, the $1,500 VR headset that's like 50% more powerful than the Quest 2, but is like three times the price. And it does have some cool tech going for it. But I mean, in terms of use case, is it worth $1,500? No, not really. And it really isn't going to help uh, spread VR to the masses further. He said, I've always been clear that I'm all about the cost effective mass market headsets being the most important thing for us right now and for the adoption of VR, which I agree with. And Quest Pro is definitely not that dot 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 said Carmack in clear passive aggressive fashion Carmack says he personally still tries to drum up interest internally in his vision of a super cheap super lightweight headset $250 and 250 grams 
he's specifically aiming for. We're not building that headset today, but I keep trying, Carmack said with some exasperation. You can see the theme here is that Carmack is just kind of exhausted at the fact that nobody at Meta who can make key decisions seems to be listening to Carmack, who knows what he's doing. You know, he is a game designer and understands what it is to build a game, which is what the metaverse is. It is essentially at its core a video game that's trying to appeal to the masses and include real life elements so that this virtual world becomes something that a lot of people interact with on a daily basis. But at the end of the day, it is a video game, and someone like Carmack is more equipped to be able to lead the charge on these endeavors. But it's hardly surprising to see tech company executives thinking they understand how games are made, and it's tech and business people who take charge instead of handing the reins over and trusting people who have made games and understand how that whole process works, and who understand what the priorities need to be for people to engage with an interactive virtual product. He does say that judged on its own merits, the Quest Pro by itself is a very fine piece of engineering, but you could say the same thing about Stadia. The cloud technology itself, fine piece of engineering, its implementation and business model, utter shit. In this presentation, John Carmack also criticized the usability of Quest headsets because of how buggy the software is and how the way it's been programmed can often lead to lengthy update hells. Our app startup times are slow, our transitions are glitchy. Essentially, the user experience is just not good enough right now. Alongside this internal turmoil, optics surrounding Meta were made worse by headlines like skepticism, confusion, frustration inside Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse struggles. Beyond Carmack, you've got reporters and journalists just kind of wondering what the hell is Meta thinking with this $1,500 Quest Pro headset that only has one or two hours of battery life. The fact that Meta made such a big deal about legs, full bodies, coming to avatars was something that was made fun of. Meta and their metaverse endeavors have just been butts of jokes for the past few months and years. People still talk about the ugly models and how Mark Zuckerberg had to desperately put out these images to reassure people that things will visually get better. And then you've got more headlines spelling doom and gloom for Meta's metaverse. The metaverse has had a very bad week, reads this IGN headline that gives you a timeline of events surrounding Meta's disastrous developments these past few weeks. Tom Warren here quoted Phil Spencer saying that right now the metaverse is just a poorly built video game, which is 100% true. Tons of headlines surrounding how Meta's value has plunged, how the stock price has dipped, how this is all a train wreck, uh, $80 billion wiped from value of Facebook and Instagram owner Meta, Facebook parent Meta shares fall to new multi-year lows, Meta is losing billions on the metaverse and it's not getting any better, so on and so forth. Facebook parent Meta is having a no good, horrible day after dismal earnings report. Some outlets just put it very simply, it's official, Meta's a disaster. And you can see for yourself how the stock has plunged. You can see it's the lows it's been since, I mean, freaking like 2015, basically. So, yeah, rough tidings all around. Making awful optics worse is how Mark's poor leadership led to the reduction of Meta's workforce. 13% of the workforce, more than 11,000 employees were let go from the company back in November of 2022. I take full responsibility, says Mark, while facing zero consequences for his poor leadership. The culmination was even more negative PR from headlines like Meta's foundation is crumbling, not even Mark Zuckerberg's beloved Metaverse projects are safe from Meta sweeping layoffs, and then most recently, things got even worse for Meta when it was reported that in a scathing exit memo, Meta VR expert John Carmack derides the company's bureaucracy I have never been able to kill stupid things before they cause damage, he said in this post that was leaked by the press before John Carmack eventually decided to make it public. Business Insider and the New York Times reported on this memo that John Carmack eventually just posted on Facebook since these news outlets were just picking a few choice bits out of it instead of just posting the full thing for full context. So you can read this for yourself if you want. I've just highlighted the important bits. He does confirm right here that I resigned from my position as an executive consultant for VR with Meta. He did compliment the Quest 2. He genuinely believes that to be a solid and good product. Quest 2 is almost exactly what I wanted to see from the beginning. Despite all of the complaints I have about our software, millions of people are still getting value out of it. We have a good product. It is successful and successful products make the world a better place. It all could have happened a bit faster 
faster and been going better if different decisions had been made. Again, John Carmack makes it a point to emphasize just how poorly and inefficiently Meta's vast resources are being used and how that's slowing down progress surrounding what could be compelling endeavors if Meta had just the right ideas and the right direction that Carmack believes he has. And I would much sooner rather trust Carmack than Zuckerberg's leadership on this front. He wished things were better, but we built something pretty close to the right thing. The issue is our efficiency. Some will ask, why care how the progress is happening as long as it is happening? An organization that is only known in efficiency is ill-prepared for the inevitable competition and or belt tightening, but really, it is the more personal pain of seeing a 5% GPU utilization number in production. I'm offended by it. He must really believe the efficiency at Meta to be abysmal if he's comparing that to 5% GPU utilization. He does admit he's just kind of being overly poetic here, but he really seems exhausted and exasperated by his experience with that company, especially over the last few years, and by how little progress has been made despite the position that Meta is in as just a corporation with all the resources in the world. We have a ridiculous amount of people and resources, but we constantly self-sabotage and squander effort. There is no way to sugarcoat this. I think our organization is operating at half the effectiveness that would make me happy. Some may scoff and contend we're doing just fine, but others will laugh and say half. Ha, I'm at quarter efficiency. It has been a struggle for me, he finally admits. I have a voice at the highest levels here, so it feels like I should be able to move things, but I'm evidently not persuasive enough. Basically, the guy who knows what he's doing isn't being listened to by the higher-ups. Typical tech company shenanigans. Kind of like how Amazon hired a guy who had no idea about game development to run their games division, which is what led to so many failed projects at Amazon who are more sort of tech-minded than they are you know, video game developer minded. A good fraction of things I complain about eventually turn my way after a year or two passes and evidence piles up, but I've never been able to kill stupid things before they cause damage or set a direction and have a team actually stick to it. I think my influence at the margins has been positive, but it has never been a prime mover. He's so constricted that he can't really move the needle by much. Basically, he's restricted from really being able to efficiently uh, implement his ideas he has to go through a bunch of hoops and red tape in order to get the most basic things done. And that's how game development at Amazon Games was also described, where because Amazon was run like a tech company, they didn't allow ideas to flow. Everything had to get approval and everything just got stalled constantly because the process was not conducive to free-flowing creativity. Not saying this is exactly that same case, but it sounds like Carmack felt very constricted despite being in a position where he should be able to have a lot of say in certain things, especially the areas where he's uh, more of an expert in compared to these more tech-minded executives. Enough complaining, I wearied of the fight and have my own startup to run. Basically says, you know what, I'm fed up, I'm tired, you know, Enough of this, I'm out. But the fight is still winnable. VR can bring value to most of the people in the world, and no company is better positioned to do it than Meta. Maybe it actually is possible to get there by just plowing ahead with current practices, but there is plenty of room for improvement. Make better decisions and fill your products with give a damn. This feels like a major loss for Meta. John Carmack feels like one of the few higher-ups who knows what the fuck he's doing. This feels like Konami losing Kojima and them thinking we can make future Metal Gear games equally successful. What we got from that was Metal Gear Survive and without Carmack we're essentially gonna get Meta's equivalent of that is what this is starting to feel like. Ars Technica's report on all of this made it a point to highlight that Carmack's departure removes one of the last through lines Meta had to the old guard of executives that helped lead early VR headset efforts at Oculus long before its absorption into Facebook slash Meta. The old guard that played such a pivotal role in how much VR has developed these past couple of years, this past decade. And this kind of reminds me of how certain ones gold standard game development studios like BioWare and Blizzard have deteriorated since the departure of many of the old guards who made those studios what they are. It feels like Meta is headed in that direction where it's just going to get worse as more sound decision makers kind of get fed up with the bureaucracies and the poor decision making within Meta's leadership 
and just let Meta be to their own devices. Now, the current CTO of Meta, Boz, made it a point to tweet about the impact that John Carmack had in the VR realm. It is impossible to overstate the impact you've had on our work and the industry as a whole. Your technical prowess is widely known, but it is your relentless focus on creating value for people that we will remember most. Thank you and see you in VR. In John Carmack's series of tweets announcing that he has resigned from Meta, he emphasizes how frustrated he's been with Meta's leadership. I've always been pretty frustrated with how things get done at Facebook slash Meta. Everything necessary for spectacular success is right there, but it doesn't get put together effectively. There is a notable gap between Mark Zuckerberg and I on various strategic issues, so I knew that it would be extra frustrating to keep pushing my viewpoint internally. He seems to imply that staying at Meta would have been an exercise in just slamming his head against an immovable brick wall, a really stubborn brick wall that he clearly can have no influence over and that is clearly unwilling to budge in any way, shape, or form and meet John Carmack halfway so at that point, it's like his efforts just feel like they're going to waste and he wants to pursue endeavors where he can feel like he can contribute to and, you know, he can help make progress without, you know, interference from higher ups who just really don't understand what they're doing. As for what's next for John Carmack, well, he believes that AI has a lot of potential in the future. So he founded his own AI company, Keen Technologies, to help with uh, AI development and the like, just as he helped shape VR. I have a little doubt that he's going to contribute greatly to AI, which can certainly have its uses when used ethically and appropriately. I guess only time will tell how Meta's Reality Labs division and their metaverse endeavors will proceed and develop without John Carmack to steer the ship or help steer the ship. In the meantime, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on John Carmack leaving Meta, how you think that'll affect the company, and what your future predictions and prospects are for Meta as a whole, as well as their Reality Labs endeavors in particular. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.